are in control of the sunshine as well as the rain. I thank you, Lord God, that you hold back the storm. Woke up this morning, didn't look like no storm hit Blythewood. I don't know where you live, but look like everything is good and everything is well. We have control of what's going on here on the earth, but we got to use the gifts and the talents that God has given us. The gift of being able to pray. The talent to, to go forth and exclaim and proclaim what God has said unto you, what you can do. Genesis 1 and 26, it said, we have rule over this earth. Take control of what God has given you. Use the gifts and the talents that God has given you to speak that thing that is not as though it were. Amen, amen, amen. We got to speak these things into existence. What do you want to see happen here in your life? What is it you want God to do for you? You know, many times we just take for granted the things that we've seen over the years and things that we've come in contact over the years. Well, as this week was going on, God's been showing me some things. And for many years, um, even when my kids were little, they're now 28 and 33 now, but God gave me the um, wisdom to look up the meaning of candy cane, something that we put on our trees or something that we give out during this season. And you know what? When I found out what the candy cane represents, where it all started from, I have to share it with you each and every season that we go into our Christmas on December 25th. So I want you to know what the real reason was, how it came to be about the candy cane. The candy maker began with a stick of pure white hard candy, which symbolizes the virgin birth and sinless nature of Jesus. The hardness is the solid rock and firmness of the promise of God. He then formed, this is the candy maker, he then formed the candy into a J. So the candy cane isn't really supposed to be like this on your tree. The candy cane is really a J. It's really a J. The J is for who? Jesus, the Savior, and God's shepherd. He stained it with three small red stripes. If you look at the candy cane, it's got three thin red stripes on it. Probably never paid any attention. It has the three red stripes representing the scourging of Jesus receiving prior to his crucifixion for our healing and the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. He added one large red stripe. If you look on the candy cane, it has one wide red stripe. That one red large stripe represents the shedding of his blood on the cross for our salvation. Amen. See? See how awesome it is? The candy cane is really a J, not a candy cane to hang, hang on the tree. Man created the way he wanted to do just like I'm watching the news, and we're talking about the weather, and the weatherman talked about on December 25th, this is what the weather is going to be, and on the 24th, this is what the weather is going to be, and on the 26th. Well, on the 24th, which was uh, Hanukkah, it had the menorah, which is the, seven, uh, the nine candles on the menorah. And on the 26th, it had Kwanzaa, which had a candlestick with nine candles on it as well. And on the 25th, it has Santa Claus. No birth of Jesus Christ on there. Just a cute little Santa Claus on there with his beard and his hat. And I thought, well, how is everybody else being represented correctly? But the I have to give you a warning before we even start this message. No, keep it going. And the warning is that some was going to be exposed if they don't fall in line with God's love. God has given us a message and this word is going to be a challenging word and it's going to be an exposing word and it's nothing Pastor Campbell can do about it. I'm not going to fight the Holy Spirit. I'm not going to stop the Holy Spirit. I'm going to flow right along with the Holy Spirit. Amen. So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the warning has been laid and the warning has been given. If you're not who you say you are, you will be exposed by the Holy Spirit. Amen. By the Holy Spirit. We can't take the baggage that we have in us right now in 2019 to 2020. 
God says that he's going to do something new in us. But we got to get rid of the baggage, the residue that's weighing us down. The false idols, the false, the false testimonies, the false words, the false this. Angel, turn me down a little bit. I think I'm number one. The false this and the false that. We have to get rid of it. And God is saying that he's going to expose it if you don't get rid of it. And it's not that he's mad at you. It's that he loves you. He only chastens those that he loves. He only chastens those that he loves. God said he's not going to spare the rod on us. He's not going to spare the rod on us. And before I go any further, Sister Diana, Brother Chuck, and Pastor Wendy gave me something in Sunday school that I want to make sure that I get out also. When we told you that when you gave your life to Christ, that every demon in hell is going to come after you because they're mad at you, because you walked away from serving Satan. But guess what he said? Did you hear that song? He said that he's equipping you to be a winner. Amen. It, all the messages that you, that you sat under and heard, it was preparing you for a time as when you walk out this ministry. I hadn't told you that. I just told you about the tax that's going to come. But he said that you're a winner and that you're a champion. And he's prepared all of us. See, we say that all the time. You know, when we, we, when we tell people that all, all hell is going to break loose in their lives when they walk out of the church, when they gave their life, we forgot to tell them that they already won. The weapons will form, but they shall not. They will not what? That means that God has already equipped you, bro. He said you're more than a champion. You're more than a champion. And, and he said that you're more than enough. You're going to prosper in everything that you go into. When you go into it by the leading of the spirit of God. You're going to overflow. I'm going to, to share it with you. And Pastor Wendy came out. She said, do you want some tea? Last night she asked. I said, yeah, I want some tea. So I was sitting there watching... Uh, football and basketball. I was, I was flipping back and forth, watching Ohio State beat Kentucky. <laughs> Had to throw that one in. <laughs> but, hold on a second. Let me get this out. Bro. But I was enjoying this tea, and I never looked at the saucer. And I was holding it because it was real hot. I was holding it from the saucer, and the tea was in there, and I was drinking it like this. And all of a sudden, I felt some wetness on me. And what was coming was what was in the overflow of the saucer. And it was falling on me. And she said, she came up, she said, what you do, fall asleep? I said, no, the overflow got me. <laughs> See, what's going to take place in our lives right now is God says that he's going to sit you in the anointing. And he said he's going to pour out a word in you and that the overflow of that word is, is going to overtake your life. <laughs> but you got to be prepared to receive the overflow. See, what would happen if I wasn't prepared to receive the overflow? I was, I was sitting there looking at this shirt. I said, let me take this thing off and put a dry shirt on. But I stepped, I continued to look at that thing. And then God said, don't take it off because it's the overflow. How many of us are taking off the overflow when God has poured it on you? Because you didn't understand what the overflow was for your life. You wasn't properly prepared for the overflow. So you, since you didn't know, you took it off. And you just messed up the blessing for somebody else in your life. Because you took it off. Because remember, you're blessed to be a blessing. You're blessed to help somebody out. And the overflow is where it comes from in your life. You've done everything that you were supposed to do. God said, let me overflow into somebody else's life. 
Do not discard your overflow. Do not discard your overflow. Because God is trying to get, the, get, the, get you to somewhere where somebody else needs you. It was like four gentlemen that gave their life. We was at a funeral yesterday. Four gentlemen gave their life to Christ. I, one person understood that. Four gave their life to Christ in the funeral. And watch this. I told them, outside I went to them and said, it's too late for you to change your mind now. What you just made in front of that church affects the lives of somebody else. By your testimony. By you getting up saying that I received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of my life, it is now out of your hands. It is now in the lives of somebody else. Because the part I didn't say, one of them already smelled like marijuana. But God, God didn't say come in when you clean yourself up. God said come in and receive me just how you are. <laughs> See, they understood at that point they couldn't do it for themselves. They had to get it from another source. Amen. A different spirit. Right. Pastor, what are you talking about? A different spirit. If you need to know, go, to, go listen to uh, Joshua and Caleb. Caleb said some of these things that we couldn't get, but unless we had a different spirit. Your spirit got to be different from the world. That's why God has given us warnings. We got to be different from the world. We got to have the spirit of God. Unconditional love. A godly spirit that's only sent by God. Not a man-made thing. Where you come in and the pastors don't challenge you in your spirit. Let you sit there and live in your mess day after day. But you need a pastor that's going to come to you and say, baby, that's wrong. Man, you got to treat her better than that. You got you to gotta pour into your kids. Man, you're wasting your money by doing this and doing that. You need somebody that's going to be truthful to you. Warning, 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 I'm telling you. And, and when I come to you, don't be mad because I'm coming by the leading of the Spirit. And that goes both ways. Pastor, can you help me? I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't quite understand what you're saying. I don't think that's right. And if I can't, if I can't receive you, something's wrong with me. You might be in the wrong church if you can't come to me and say something that doesn't line up in the Bible with you. Right, Sister Dinah? She, some things that, that I was saying, she didn't quite understand. And we had to have a talk about this thing. And then we got the talk. And now she said, guess what? She said, now this church feels more like a family because the spirit is like-minded. You got to understand, we can disagree to agree, but we got to have an agreement somewhere in this disagreement. I, it doesn't that I believe what you're saying, but I understand what you're saying. I, I, it's printed out. But see, too many churches, too many pastors saying it's my way or no way. It, it can never be their way. It has to be the way of the spirit of God. If you come your way, you mislead people, you lose people. But when you come with God, it's going to be so much of a, a different spirit in that place. And, it, and you can feel the love when you pull in the parking lot. You don't got to wait till you come into the church. But the love of God will take over. Donnie, go in there. Number one, turn the top part, the gain, down some for me. It's the thing. The gain. When you have the trueness of God in your life. That's somewhat of an introduction to what we're going to take place. <laughs> if you got your Bible, turn to 1 Corinthians. Pastor Wendy. Let me tell you something before we get started. I love you. Amen. That's good. Now, Angel, turn it up a little bit to your part. Thank you, Lord God. Can you all hear me? Can you hear me? That sounds good, everybody. Amen. Thank you, Lord God. 
Yeah, that was a little too loud for me. Amen. Everybody good now? I want you to think, hey, Pastor, why are you yelling at me, Pastor? <laughs> Amen. Yes. All right. I had to hear it from my amen corner. Amen, amen. First Corinthians chapter what? 13, amen, amen. Y'all all with me. Y'all all with me. Amen. I, I done felt like I've been preaching an hour already. <laughs> it ain't got hot up in here. <laughs> Whew. I tried to keep this jacket on. I wanted y'all to see me in my Christmas uniform outfit. <laughs> I was taking, taking my directions from AJ and Brother Donnie. I went in their closets and look how they dressed. Hey, man, hey, man. When you have it, please stand to your feet. I'm going to read from, from all the way to 13. I'm going to probably have, you have a seat somewhere in there. I want you to stay standing the whole time. I'm going to give you the subject title before we get started. Love the qualifying factor. Love the qualifying factor. Hmm. Hmm. Think about that. Love the qualifying factor. We're going to have a series on love. And I'm going to tell you right now. I'll wait while I got you standing. I'll read. I'll tell you that after that. Verse number one, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love. I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understanding all the mysteries and all the knowledge and through and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains but have not love. I have nothing. Or it says, I am nothing. You may have a seat. You may have, I, I'm not going to get finished reading that all in one set. It, that right there just made me stop reading. I can have all these things that the Bible just said, but if I don't have love, I don't have nothing. Not only do I have nothing, I am nobody because all I have to do, all I'm doing is lying. Lying and the truth's not in me. I'm a liar. And Satan is the one that is the liar. That's his gift. He's a liar. So if you have nothing and you're a liar, you are not Christ. You belong to. Hmm. So that means if I don't have love, I don't have Christ. I have Satan. How you gonna go around prophesying to me and you don't have love? Because prophecy is a word of love from sent from God to correct us. <laughs> How can I come in this church and you greet you greet me and don't love me? How can you walk in here and say, hey, good morning, men and women of God, and you don't have love? You're lying from the pit of hell, and God ain't even in you. See, this is the problem that we have, that the men and women go into church and they sit in there Sunday after Sunday, and, and, and Monday after Monday, or Wednesday or Tuesday, whenever you have Bible study. And what's taking place is no love. How can you sit in a church with no love? How? How? I just want to go. I don't want to. I don't want to stir up nothing, bro. I just want to go sit there and, and just be a part of something that 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 that's not even true. Something that's made up. Something that's fake. You might as well go to a movie theater. 
Because most of the movies we see is make believe. They're telling the vision other than Christ. They're telling their own vision. Do you understand when you when you watch TV, it says television. They're literally, literally telling you their vision. And half of us believe what their vision is instead of what the vision of Christ says for our lives. I've told, ooh, how many times we go in there and we sit down and I listen to Pastor Wendy when she said she was watching the news. But what, we look at the news and we look at the weather report and when the weather report is, we get all ruffled. But when you come into church, a faithful man of woman tell you that God said such and such, you don't even bat an eye. But you believe everything that the weather person say. But you give a faithful witness and you don't even believe the faithful witness. What's wrong? A lot of times we don't believe the faithful witness because the faithful witness don't have it in love. They don't release something, a story to us. They don't release the truth to us in love. See, well, I can say something that, that, that will bring light to all your wrong, but if I deliver it to you in love, you will receive it the right way. But if I come at you sideways, you ready to ball them up. <laughs> you ready to ball them up, right, brother? <laughs> but see, when you come in love, love conquers a multitude of sin. Love will knock down some walls that's built up in people's lives that you can never come to any other way. That's why he's sitting here because of the love that you shine forth on him. So he, he told me so many other churches run him off because he's seen through the falsehood. He's seen through the lies. But when you love somebody, everybody's going to be able to come together. And conquer the sins of others. Without love, we have nothing. And with love, we have everything. Love, the qualifying factor of who we are. Pastor Wendy told you earlier once again, she said, Jesus is the reason for the season. Can I tell you something else? That is something else or someone else that is the reason for the season. Anybody besides the Sunday school attendees know who they are? Ladies, where's your purses? You got a mirror in there? You don't got a purse? That's okay. Pull that mirror out for me. Let me let you in on a secret. Can I see that? Well, James, come here for a second. Uh, watch God surprise you then. If you don't break it, that means the Holy Ghost is in you, brother. <laughs> he cleans you up on the inside so he can show forth on the outside. Amen. <laughs> So watch this. There's someone other than Jesus Christ for being the reason for the season. Who you see in it? Me. Who? James, brother James, child, child of God. Amen. So brother James, a child of God, is another reason for the season. Amen. Who you see? Me. Who's me? me? Who is he? Jeff, Jeff who? Jeff so you telling me other than Jesus, Jeff McAllister is the reason for the season? Oh, Lord. Do you understand how, thank you, sir, take a bow. Do you understand, okay, Minister Tamika, put that mirror down. <laughs> she going to get <laughs> Do you understand how special you are? Not only special, do you understand how much loved you are? Amen. Loved. Loved. How can you walk out of the house and say, oh, don't nobody love me? Because you believe in a lie. 
You believe in a lie. And guess what? I'm here to clean up that light. I said, sit in your spirit right now. You are loved. Present, past, tense, and forevermore. You're loved. God is, he says that he'll never leave you nor forsake you. He said that I'm always with you. So he's saying that I'll always love you. All you got to do is understand that I love you. It'd be like me being married to this beautiful woman and never told her I love her. But see what happens with us. We don't understand love. We don't understand the gifting that's inside of us. Do you understand that this love thing is reciprocated? Watch this. Watch how easy it is. I love you. I love you more. You're beautiful. You're do you see how this thing works? You, do you understand? It, 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 and, and let me tell you something right now. If you're not married, if you by yourself, you go in there. It, it, see how minister to me? Y'all missed it, though. She had this mirror, and she was back there. She was doing all this things. She was prepping herself up. She was preparing herself. She was telling herself that she loved. Tell him that. Oh, she just said she loved you. See how, how you can never go empty. Can I, you can never go empty. She poured out, he poured back in. Try it. See, you can never go empty. And if you're at home by yourself, you just look in the mirror. I love me. And, and as you're saying this, you're talking back to your reflection. You're pouring back into yourself. Do you understand how this thing works? Love, the qualifying factor. It qualifies us. It says that we're redeemed of the Lord. And those that are redeemed, let them say so. You got to be able to open your mouth. You got to start speaking love into your life. Where I leave off. Anybody know what scripture I was, I was on too? Thank you. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burnt, but have not loved, it profits me nothing. So we can go around saying that we help this person and help this person and help that person. But we don't have love. What did we just do? We lied about it. And we build up ourselves. And let's say that again. You, you just lied and God wasn't even in it. So all you did was you got your reward right there from yourself. Your father in heaven didn't gave you nothing because you did it for your own glory. Verse number four, love suffers long. <laughs> I'm going to stop right there for a moment. Love suffers long. Can I tell you that love is a gift? Gift given to us by God. So in all the gifts that he gives us, there's a testing that comes along with them and see if we're going to be able to hold on to them, bro. And see if we're going to honor him in the gifts that he's given us. So we see here right here it says love suffers long. Love is not a quick thing. You have to endure this love. You have to go through this love. I've come to find out, in order to find out if how somebody reacts or how somebody acts, we have to go through seasons with the individuals. And, and don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that, that God is not a quick worker because he can work quick in some marriages. He, he, he has introduced you to him tomorrow, today and you get married tomorrow. 
But you ain't suffering long in that, uh, in that process. Remember one thing I told you about God. God says that I take you through seasons so that you can endure the test of time to see if you're going to be able to hold on to this thing. So you go through the pit at times in order to get to the palace. But if you can't make it in the pit, you're not going to move to the palace. Do you understand what I'm saying? But let me get back to this seasons to understand people. I'm a summer person. But born in the winter. Operated in the fall and love the spring. <laughs> but you act different in each season. I don't act the same way in the wintertime as I act in the summertime. I don't act the same way in the summertime as I act in the fall time. I don't act the same way in the fall that I do in the spring. So you, in order to understand people, you might want to go through some seasons with them to understand how they are. Because they might show you somebody different in the summertime than what they do in the springtime. The real them might come out in the wintertime and, 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 and than what they were in the summertime. So we go through seasons to understand the people. This is not a foolproof thing, though, now. I'm just giving you a boundary. Something to go on. But some people never act. You, like you say, you never know the real them until they get tested in the time. That's true. That's true. I, I don't know how you are until I see you in a pit. How do you operate in the pit? And then you might operate different in the pit than you do in the palace. Because you got different things in the palace than you do in the pit. You got comforts in the palace and you don't have the comforts in the pit. So can you be resourceful in the pit when you get to the palace? Remember, love is a qualifying thing. So what qualifies you in what season? What love do you have in each season? Can that love keep you in those seasons? Who are you really? What, what is the qualifying factor in your season of love? Verse number... Somebody just keep me hit, keep me straight here. Five. Love suffers long. Okay, thank you. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not envy. Love does not envy. Love does not envy. Let me speak to the married couples real quick. Love does not envy. I don't need to have what Pastor Wendy has, and she don't need to have what I have. As long as we have each other, then we have King Jesus. I've seen relationships where husbands is not satisfied, say that the wife got a, a master's degree. He can't, he got to get a double master's degree because he has to outdo his wife. That's envy and that's going to be, it's not love. He's in a competition with her. But you got to love Love is not going to be competitive in, in itself. See, guess, let me, let's help right here. Man, we have to prepare ourselves to be able to move forward in love with a woman. So we, in, in the scripture, it talks about a man does not need to go to war or do all these things for a year. Remember we talked about this? And all he needs to do in that year is be able to romance his wife and take care of his wife and they enjoy each other. But let's let's go on to circumstances of life. If he can't do that, you still you're not less than a man. That's why he sent you a helpmate. You help one to another. See, a real man will be able to receive help from his wife. A man that's being phony or falsified and saying that I'm less than a man if I can't do it all on my own. But we understand the gift of God. He said he gave you a helpmate. 
And a lot of men will walk out on their marriages because they can't work anymore. So the real thing is, if you can't keep your marriage, was God ever in it? We're going to come back to this point. I got something that's that's going to that's going to release some spiritual aspect in our lives that God showed me in this message on last night. But we still enter in the introductory phase. I just don't want to hit them over the head, Sister Diana. We got to walk into this thing easily. God is easing us into this thing. You know what he's like? You know how we woo each other, man? You know how you woo your woman? God is saying, I'm wooing you in this message. I don't want to give you too much. I want you to be able to keep each other. Amen. So, love does not parade itself. It's not puffed up. Love does not parade itself. What is that saying to you? Love does not parade itself. Anybody? Yeah. God does not have to brag about you. And you don't got to brag about God. All you got to do is live your life. Show it. I'll give you an example. I told you we were at a funeral yesterday. And all these people kept walking up to me. Are you a pastor? Are you a clergy? Uh, we'll sit you up front with everybody else. I never said. I never opened my mouth. I just walked in. See, you don't have to brag about who you are when you're in Christ. Your gift and your anointing will make room for you. God will send out an invitation of who you are before you get there. If you walk right with him. Never open my mouth. And then lady said, you sure you don't want to sit up there with the rest of us? I said, no, I'm going to sit with the family. She said, I know that's right. She was more impressed with me sitting with the family than me sitting up there saying that I'm a pastor for everybody can see. Let that sink in. That was a compliment for me right there. Let God work. Let God shine forth in you. Verse number five. Does not behave rudely. Whew. Men and women of God. <laughs> Love does not behave rudely. Rudely. Let me let me let me take this thing a, a little farther. Husbands and wives of God, love does not behave rudely. She's not lesser than you are. Husbands, did you hear that? She's actually actually equal with you when God made you guys as one. But he made you the head of the household, but he didn't make her lesser because he made you man of the household. He didn't make her to for you to rule over her. He made her for you to love on her. I had to learn that. I had to learn that. And that's why when we do marriage counseling with people, we tell them that they're so much farther than that Pastor, then Pastor Wendy and I are, have ever been. Because we sat down, listen, listen, with godly counseling. It's a different from man and woman counseling than godly counseling. Because the counseling that we give is imparted by God. So when you get some godly counseling, that takes you to the front of the line. And you're not bragging about it. You're thanking God for it. Amen. Does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. It rejoices in the truth. I'm not lying to you. I'm telling you the truth. So God rejoices in the truth. I say, oh, it's just a little white lie. 
It's okay. I just said it because I didn't want to hurt her feelings. No. A lie is a lie. Pastor Wendy had a picture. And in the picture, <laughs> Pastor Wendy's hair is sticking up like this. I could have said, oh, it'll be all right. There's nothing wrong with it. No. What's wrong with your hair? <laughs> Why is you? You see, that little thing is really a little white lie to somebody. See, as men and women of God, we can't let a little white lie dictate how we live our lives. And shame the devil. That's not scripture, but, <laughs> but just tell the truth. It reminds me, my grandmother, she always said that. <laughs> you about ready to crack up already. You ain't listening to it. No matter what a child looks like, there's always something cute about that child. And we remember we were, we were over visiting our grand, grandma. I, I ain't seen you. You don't know what I'm going to say. <laughs> and, we, and it was two kids over there. And my grandmother told one, one of the kids, she said, oh, look how cute you are and, and how handsome you are. And she told the other kid, you sure got some nice outfit on. But the kid, didn't, the kid was little and didn't understand. But <laughs> Pastor Wendy, I heard what you said. <laughs> she it got Pastor Wendy. But she didn't lie. But she didn't say that to hurt the kid's feeling either. She picked something out that was nice looking about the kid. <laughs> All right, let me move on. <laughs> I'll leave that one alone. Where am I? Bears all things, believe all things, hope all things, endure all things. When we do our vows, there's certain things that we don't say in it that, that you hear from other churches. What we leave out. See, what we, why do we leave those out? Because we don't want to speak disadvantage over your marriage before you get started. We want you to endure all things. Love all things. But we speak positive over your life. Not saying that these things won't happen, but what we're saying is we won't speak these things from our mouth. And, and in that moment, because guess what? What happens is in that moment, a man and a woman are so, so in tune to what there, was taking place. They will agree with what the man or woman says when they're giving them their vows. Not even realizing what was just spoken over their lives. That's me and Pastor Wendy. But I believe that you have to get every advantage in the word of God spoken into your life at all times. I don't want nobody speaking nothing over my life that's not sent from heaven. Give me the advantage. And I want to give you the advantage. I want your love to endure. I want your love to go through it. I want your love to prosper. I want your love to, to be able to push through sickness and health and all that stuff so that you can get everything God has in store for you. You understand? I'm still on the introduction, ladies and gentlemen. Verse number eight, love never fails. Say this with me. Love never fails. Say it again. Love never fails. Come here. Look at, look at him, look at him. Look at Brother Chuck. Love never fails. Love never fails. Do you understand? 
love never fails. What fails is our feelings. Your feelings can change at any moment. So let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen, that's not married. If you, Angel, listen to me. If you ever have a gentleman or a woman says that I feel that I love you, you need to run. Because feelings will change. So that love that follows I feel can change. But we just read in scripture where it says love never. So if y'all fall out of love, what happens? Was, was it sent by God? Or did we feel that God sent us that way? Oh, no. Thank you. You ready to finish this message? Sure. <laughs> Just ask yourself, what sent me that way? Was it love? Was it God? Because God says love never, but feelings will change. Real love, agape love. Love never fails. But whatever there are prophecies, they will fail. Uh-oh. You know, you ever, you go to a church and they always want to run up and prophesy to you? I, let, let me tell you, can I give you my twist on that? If they always want to run up every Sunday and prophesy to you, do you just think for a moment that they're not prophesying to you? Who has a relationship with God? Prophecy is what? Can, can I ask you a question? Is God always talking to you? Isn't God quiet with you at some times? How can he always, every Sunday you walk in the church, that he's prophesying to you and he's quiet at times? Seriously. God is quiet at times because he's saying don't do nothing. I haven't gave you a word because I don't want you to do nothing. I want you to stay put and know that I am God. But you go into church Sunday after Sunday and, and they always prophesy to the same person every Sunday. God ain't never talked to me that much and I'm a pastor of a church. I'm sitting there, Lord, you ain't said nothing. To tell me something, I got to get a word from you, God. Just stay the course. Stay the course. Because let me tell you, what he's already put in you is already in you. So sometimes he don't need, he ain't going to say that to you because he want to see if you follow in direction from, and you know that I, without a shadow of God, a doubt that I am God of your life. But if you go into church and every Sunday, all they doing is prophesying to you. Somebody lying somewhere. And some of them words of prophecy is not meant to be said. Because God don't talk to everybody that much. Yeah, that, that make you do that much. Hmm, what's going on here? See, we got to understand. God's love is not going to fail us. People are the ones that's trying to mislead us because they are in their feelings. Remember, I tell you, feelings change. I feel like leading this church. I feel like preaching to this church. I feel like minister to in that person. I, oh, I feel like minister to in you today. I feel like minister to you today. Oh, my feelings just changed. I don't want to minister to you today because I don't like the makeup you have on today. See how that is? And that's what can take place in your feelings. But when you got the love of God and God is in you, he's not going to change. Because he said love doesn't fail. And guess what? When I come to you and I talk to you from 
the, the standpoint of the heaven's throne room, it's going to cheer you up. And it's going to make you feel better. What's wrong with you today? You walked in with, with this anger. God said he loves you. And can I tell you something else? How simple this thing might be? Watch this. See that? Just a smile. Sister Jean, you all dialed up today. You sure look beautiful today. Thank you. I hope I don't look beautiful, though. <laughs> I pray that I look handsome. <laughs> but you see, when you do it from love from God, the interaction changes. Bro, we so happy you're here today. I thank God for you. I'm, I thank God that you ain't doing this today. See, this that, that's what wanting the love of God will not fail. When you have a heart that's built so hard and, and you got a fortress around this wall that's inside of you, you think it's just a brick? You got a brick wall and then be, and behind the brick you got a, a 10 inch steel wall behind that thing. And forced with some concrete after that. But you come into this church with all this. I'm sorry, you come into this ministry with all that build up around your heart. You don't force, the people of God don't force themselves on, but they continue to love on you. With the God be love of God. What is that? Wait, I don't expect nothing in return from you. I'm giving of myself because that's what God ordained me to do and I don't care. Let me put a qualifier. I don't care if my feelings get hurt if I'm doing it in God love. If my feelings get hurt, I'm coming back again. I'm going to do it again. Ah, you might think, what's wrong with that fool? It ain't that he's a fool. That's a child of God. And a child of God, don't quit. And continue to move on. Child of God, don't quit. But watch, they continue to come. They continue to do. They continue to pour out. And all of a sudden, I, I just watched Santa Claus is coming to town. And I, I look at the, uh, the wizard. The, what was his name? The, uh, that, the, 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 the warlock. And what happened with that warlock? When the love continued to shine forth, he melted. The, the things that was covering his body, it melted. So when the people come, that their heart is so guarded. And you continue to love on them. And they finally, and you finally say, or do the thing that God has ordained you to do. Watch that, 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 that guard that was on the heart just collapse. And when it collapsed, the appearance change. The whole continent is something else. It's different. And that's what the love of God does. Don't forget, I gave you a qualifier. It's a warning with this thing. If you're not real, you're going to be revealed. Amen. Let me finish these scriptures and we're getting out of here. Amen. Verse number eight again. Love never fails, but whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. Verse number nine. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. We never prophesy the whole thing. Did you ever notice that? That scripture said we never prophesy the whole thing. Do you know why we never prophesy the whole thing? Because God does not reveal everything to you. God gives it you in parts. He gives it to you in part. Because what? What happens is if God will give it to one individual everything. They will start acting like Lucifer did. Couldn't handle it. Can't handle the truth. God said, I can't give one individual everything. That's too much power for that individual. I can't give it to him. I got to give it to him in parts. Verse number 10. 
But when that which is perfect has, oh, pastor, pastor, did you just say that? But that which is perfect, there's only one perfect man. There's only one perfect being. Ah, the scripture said, but when that which is perfect, do you understand that there is a perfect love? Oh, no we could die. No we can die. But do you understand that the perfect love covers a multitude of sins? When we get together in, in the perfection of God's love that, that flows from her to me and me to her, we can release a lot of things in the spirit of God and help a lot of people. So let's get that perfect love. For when, when we know in part, I'm back to verse 9 again, and we prophesy in part, verse 10, but when, we, when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away with. <sighs> so Jesus Christ said, he never leave us nor forsake us. So that means that which is perfect has come to us. And then watch, the parts, the parts, that's not whole anymore, it's us, is now here and done away with because he's now done his perfect work inside of us. Can I get an amen? amen. Oh, I want to make sure you're with me. God's people, are you with me? Yeah. Yeah, all right. <laughs> amen. Now I know I'm in the right house. But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away with. When I was a child, say that, when I was a child, I, was a child. I spoke as a child. I, as a child. I, understood, as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. I as a child. But, but what does that mean? A change is coming. So uh, it says, but. I lost world. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. So what it, what it literally is saying, I put away ignorance. I put away stupidity. I put away dumb things. I, I put away things that's not of the kingdom. And I became, though, that which was part of the kingdom. Hmm. All right, verse 12. For now we see in a mirror... Dimly, but then face to face, now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I also am known. Hmm. And finally, verse 13. And now abide faith, hope, love. These three, but the greatest of these is love is a qualifying factor. And you know what he said when he said after love? He said, if you need to know the rest, you need to come back on next Sunday. And I'll give it to you then. Amen. 